Good morning, team two. Welcome to Monday, the 15th of June. Let's get some learning done. We are going to be reading the tale of Peter Rabbit together. So let's have a look. And it's written by Beatrix Potter. So pause me here and have a read. Now, before you start to read the text, read your questions first, then read the text. And remember, you're always looking for the answers. So pause me now, read the questions, find the answers. So once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. So the questions, what are the names of the rabbits? Where do the rabbits live? I would like you to write the names of the rabbits are, and I want commas and an and in the correct place, please, guys. And where do the rabbits live? The rabbits live where? OK, so pause me now and write your answers. Pause me now. So what are the names of the rabbits? The names of the rabbits are Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. And where do the rabbits live? The rabbits live in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Pause me here. Not yet, sorry, in a moment. So read your questions first, then read the extract and then write your answers in full sentences. Pause me now. So our questions, is old Mrs. Rabbit a kind or unkind rabbit? And why do you think this? And where can the rabbits go and where must they not go? So let's read the extract. Now, my dear, said, Miss, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. So question number one, is old Mrs. Rabbit a kind or unkind rabbit and why do you think this? Is she kind or unkind? I want you to write me the sentence. Old Mrs. Rabbit is, tell me if she's kind or unkind, because... And then where can the rabbits go and where must they not go? So your sentence then will be the rabbits can go here, but is a conjunction we need, but they must not go here. So pause me now if you haven't got your answers yet and fill in your sentence stems. Old Mrs. Rabbit is, I don't know, so is she kind or is she unkind? I think she's pretty fair. I think she's fairly kind because she's saying, you can go into the fields or down the lane. So she's given them some choice. So I would say, Old Mrs. Rabbit is kind because she lets the rabbits play by themselves and trusts them. Where can the rabbits go and where must they not go? The rabbits can go into the fields or down the lane, but they must not go into Mr. McGregor's garden. So read your questions, then read the extract, then come back, think of your sentence stems that can introduce your answer. We'll go through those before we go through the answers. So pause me now. Two questions. What type of pie is this and who made the pie? So let's read the extract. Your father had an accident there. He was put in the pie by Mrs. McGregor. So what type of pie is this? This pie is a daddy rabbit pie. It's father rabbit, isn't it? It's a rabbit pie. And who made the pie? Mrs. McGregor made the pie. So I want full sentence answers, please, guys. Multiplication sentences using the multiplication symbol today. Eva has been organising some circles. When you see this image, what do you see? Hmm. I can see two things. I can see an addition of 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. And I can see a multiplication of two groups of five, which is equal to ten. Can you see that too? 
Annie is changing things around a little bit. She's moved two of the circles. What do you see now? Hmm. Now I can see two plus two plus two plus two plus two, which is still equal to ten. And I can see five groups of two this time, which is equal to ten. What do you see here? Have a look at the images and then see if you can write an addition number sentence and a multiplication number sentence to match. Then see if you can fill in the gaps in our stem sentence. Pause the video here and have a go. What did you see? In this first one I saw 4 plus 4 which is equal to 8 and two lots of 4 which is 8. So I thought there are two equal groups with 4 in each group. What about the second one? I can see 3 plus 3 plus 3 which is 9 or three groups of 3 which is 9. Three equal groups with three fish in each group. Oh dear, I've mixed up my additions and my multiplications. Can you match them up? Because 4 plus 4 certainly isn't equal to 3 times 4. Pause the video here and have a go. Did you match them up? 4 plus 4 is equal to 2 times 4. 4 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 3 times 4. Ah, hadn't mixed those up too much. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, that's 4 lots of 3. And then 2 plus 2 plus 2 is the final one, so it must be 2 times 3. What's missing here? 2 plus something plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6 times 2. Hmm. I might go and get myself some cubes or some pieces of pasta or something that I can organise into twos because that will help me here. Pause the video here and see if you can work out what's missing. Ah, once I'd done the first one, I saw. 2 plus something plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 was equal to 6 times 2. That's 6 lots of 2, so I needed 6 twos. And then 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 was 5 lots of 5, or 5 times 5. And then there were 4 lots of 3 and 7 lots of 2. Mo is helping put some cans away. There are 14 cans altogether, and he's trying to think of a multiplication calculation that can go with it. At the moment he's arranged it into 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2, which doesn't really work for a multiplication calculation because it's not repeated addition, is it? We need all the numbers to be the same for it to be repeated addition. What about if he moved some of the cans? Ah. Now I can see a multiplication calculation. Pause the video here. Can you write down the repeated addition and the multiplication for what you can see? Good luck. Did you get 2 plus 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 2, plus 2, plus 2 is equal to 14? And what about the multiplication? Did you get 7 times 2 is equal to 14? Well done if you did. But that's not the only way, is it? Here are Mo's 14 cans again. He's going to arrange them slightly differently this time. Oh, 4 up there. And those 2 down there. What can you see now? Pause the video here and write down an addition calculation and a multiplication calculation. Good luck. What did you see? I saw 7 plus 7 
which is equal to 14. And my multiplication was 2 times 7 is equal to 14. But there's another way. Look what Mo does this time. Wow, one long line. Pause the video here and think, what are the calculations for this representation? Good luck. How did you get on with this final one? 1 plus 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 1 is equal to 14. Or 14 times 1. That would have been easier to say, wouldn't it? There is another one as well. One group of 14 is equal to 14. Well done if you got those. Use some equipment to help you complete these. I might use some tins or cans, or you could use cubes or counters, or anything you like really. Four groups of something is equal to 12. Good luck. How did you get on with those? Here are the answers. Well done. And now, have a go at the... Hello team, we are going to go on a mystery together. So I want you to pause me here and I want you to have a read of the mystery of the missing medal, please. So pause me now, have a read. I'll be back. So let's go through together. The day of the big running race has finally arrived. All the runners have been training hard for months and now at last it's time for the race to begin. All the runners want to win the grand prize, a shiny gold medal. But just before the race was due to begin, the race organisers went to get the medals ready and discovered someone had stolen the gold medal. As detective chief inspectors on the case, it is your job to find out which runner has stolen the gold medal. You have taken down the names and details of all the runners in the race. There are also five important clues to be discovered. To crack the case, you will need to solve each clue and check the information with the list of names. Will you be able to find out who stole the gold medal just before the race is finished? Good luck. So let's take a look at clue. So I want you to have a read of the clue. Pause me now guys and have a read. Pause me now. Clue one, capitalise the clue. At the scene of the crime a note has been found. It has been written by the runner who stole the medal. The thief must have been in such a rush they forgot to use some capital letters. Can you underline the letters that should be capitals at the beginning of the sentences and for the names of people, places and days of the week? Write out the capitals that should be in the note. Rearrange the letters to spell the colour of the thief's hair. So this clue is going to give us the colour of the thief. That's hard. Thief's. <laughs> okay, so you you should have read the note. If you haven't, pause me now to read it. Ha ha, now you all know that the gold medal is missing and I have stolen it. Leave £100 in the runner's changing room on Wednesday to get it back or you'll be sorry. Really got to run now. By the way, I'm one of the runners in the race, but you'll never catch me. Oh, so you've got to... Find out where the missing letters, where the missing capital letters are and write them down in a sentence that looks like this. The letters I have changed to capitals are, so you're going to go through each of the letters. Hmm, but you need the last page. Hang on, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> Put the sentence, the letters I have changed to capitals are, and now you can actually look at the sentences and find out which capitals. So that is going to lead you to the clues. So pause now, figure out which five capital letters have been missed. And it's going to give you the clue to the colour of the thief's hair. So pause me now and find your capitals. 
Okay, have you got it? So the capital letters, there was an N, a W, an O, an R, and a B. And if you rearrange those letters, it was stolen by someone with brown hair. There's our first clues for today, guys. Good job. Okay, so in our writing for today, we're going to be doing some writing about the author who wrote a book, Peter Rabbit. And this text type, I want you to have a think about what kind of text type you think it could be. The title is All About Beatrix Potter, Part A. Beatrix Potter was a famous author and illustrator. And then I'd like you to pause here and I'd like you to read the rest of this text type, please. So pause me now. She was born in London in 1866. She liked nature and drawing. She died in 1943. Beatrix's family had lots of pets, including two rabbits called Benjamin Bouncer and Peter Piper. Beatrix enjoyed drawing and painting her pets. Pause me now and read this, guys. <clears throat> the Tale of Peter Rabbit was published in 1902. Beatrix wrote the story and drew the pictures. Lots of people brought the book and liked it. She then went on to write other stories about animals. Beatrix loved the Lake District and spent most of her life there. She kept much-loved sheep on her farms and her sheep won prizes in farm shows. Her books are still very popular today. Her stories have been made into television shows and films. Her characters have been put onto stamps and coins. Has anybody watched the new Peter Rabbit? I haven't. I'm excited to because I love Peter Rabbit. So I would like you to pause now, have a look at these questions, and then I would like you to write your answers in your books, please. So pause me now. And the answers, when and where was Beatrix Potter born? She was born in London in 1866. And the four things that we know from the text that Beatrix Potter liked, nature, drawing, the Lake District, and sheep. And where did Beatrix Potter lived for most of her life. She loved the Lake District and spent most of her time there. Hi guys, the team in Britain are doing an incredible job of keeping the community really tight. It's inspirational. They're amazing. So the Britain Million have put together the idea of a time capsule. And so this is something that I've taken from their Facebook page. I don't know if you want to have a little look more in detail there, but they want stories, they want poems, they want photos of the things that you've been busy doing. Anything that you do, you can bring into school and we can use in school and you can take it to the Times capsule if you do anything electronically, which it sounds like they would like and we would like too. So it's two birds with one stone, isn't it? You can do things for them and things for us. So have a little read and get anything off that you've been busy doing. They want to see it as much as we do. One of the things that they talked about was that you could do a news report about your experience. And so here are a couple of ideas about you could any. Now, it doesn't need to just be on coronavirus. It can be on something that you did in the day at home. So it could be a newspaper on what you did during coronavirus and you could do a whole topic on it. Or it could be something really specific. Have you invented an amazing game that you and your brothers and sisters have played? There are no rules about this. You can create whatever you want to create. It also suggests a diary. So we've been busy writing diaries during this time. You might not, they might be personal. You might not want to use that or you might be happy to share, but you could write a diary piece and you could think back at some of the best times and the trickiest times, the in-between times, and you could have a little reflect back and write one piece about your time during lockdown. This is just taken from the Britain Millen Millennium um, webpage. So these are all the different things that they're offering. So I'm sure you have, I'm sure you're more aware of it than me, but if you haven't had a look, go and check it out. They're doing some awesome things. 
This is a little competition for, not a competition, this is a little activity for pen pals. So this is the form that you can fill out on the website and you've got lots of different options. One of them being that if you want to keep your address private, then that's your choice and that you can give it to the Brit and Mille, Mille, I keep wanting to call them the Brit and Millennials, the Brit and Million and they will exchange it for you. So if it's your um, address that you're unsure about, then we can look around that. So that looked like a really interesting, exciting activity. You could make a new friend during this. And then we would like any of your memories, so like the Brit and Million have asked for, we would like for the, your memories of the good, the bad, the everything in between of what you've been doing during lockdown. So if you can provide us with a photo so when we're coming back into school we can all share these and it'll be something to talk about because we're all going to have had really different experiences. So bring a, f if you want to email photos that I can forward on into school. If you want to do a little write up, there are no rules about this. There are no rules about how you can display what it is that you've been busy do doing during lockdown. But we'd love to hear and see it, please, guys. So I've put a little here. This time has been a big medley of ups and downs as we think about coming back to school we'd like to create the little book of lockdown start to gather some photographs and begin to share ideas for us to discuss further in school why have you picked this memory and what happened and then we've got a connected curriculum curriculum menu for you to have a little challenge and have a little look at so i know we've had some fabulous maps of britain come in so when you get into the end of that and you've explored some of the Britain I still want in millennium millions then you can come back to this so that hopefully that should be enough to keep you busy if you're still looking for more get in touch and we'll find we'll find some more things for you to be busy with